thing on here or what? It was just a fling. Just a fling? Yeah. You know, it's for fun. It was, it was strictly physical. It was nothing. Oh, it was just physical. Just... Yeah. That's supposed to make me feel better? Or what? Why are you doing this? I'm not you doing don't want to know. No, I do want to know. I do. So what, he and his big cock were just for fun? Is that, uh... Oh, there's no reason for you to feel threatened. I don't feel threatened. I, I love you. Uh-huh. I didn't love him. Uh-huh. Plus, you can't get on my case because you're just going to go home and get in bed with your wife. So would you think that he's a better lover than me, or...? No. <laughs> no, I'm just wondering, because maybe that could be the problem we've been having lately. No, I'm serious. Maybe you just need, like, a huge cock to make you happy. You think that that's the problem we've been having lately? The problem we've been having lately is that you're married and we've been together for what, six months tonight? The very first night that you took me out on a real date. That is the problem. How much bigger is he than me? Uh, that's all I wanna know. Get off it, will you? This was nice. Please leave it, just let it be, okay? Mm -hmm. Sure. Hi, babe. Are you here? Hi. How are you? Mm, flowers. What's the occasion? I need an occasion to buy flowers for my wife. Usually. <laughs> yeah, Where were you all night? Oh, I was at the gym. I told you I was going to go to the gym. And uh, I decided to go for a swim afterwards, and then I ran into... Uh... What's that smell? What? What smell? I guess it's your new cologne. Well, yeah. You don't like it? No, it's kind of flowery. Oh, well, well maybe it's the flowers. <laughs> I'm gonna go to bed. Anyway, so it, where are you going to bed? You know, I was at the gym tonight. I was looking for one of those, um, you know, those those uh, men's magazines, and they were and they were had an article in there about penis size. Now. I mean, it's just, you know, I know you've only been with a couple of guys. So you've told me. <laughs> but, um, is mine, uh, what, like a nice size, or? I don't know. I mean, I've never compared. Would you describe it as big, or? I don't know. Maybe? Is everything all right? Yeah. Why? Things just seem different to me lately. What do you mean, different? What do you mean? Um, you're not as affectionate as you used to be. When we first got together, <coughs> you could barely keep your hands off. And now, you know, we barely make love. And, and we never just lay around and cuddle. Well, I, I know, honey, but I, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm very, so, I'm so busy at work, and I, you know, I'm just... Well, after a while, things do slow down, you know, that's... But not for everyone, and I don't want them to slow down for us. Uh, no, why don't... should they? I mean, I'm 30 years old. I'm not ready to not have passion in my life. I know, no, I... I mean, I got married because I wanted to have kids and love and companionship. And, like, the longer we're together, the less that I seem to be getting these things. So this is about kids? No, I mean, yeah, it is about kids, but it's really more about... Us. Well, honey, I, I, I don't want to say anything, but compared to most people, we have a great marriage. That's what I think. I mean, you know. I mean, I. I <sighs> what? Why don't you give me any attention? I mean, why am I your last what? priority? What are you talking about? I, I got you flowers and. Honey, come on. Griffin and I have been happily married for six years, and I would say that our sex life is healthy. You know, it's slowed down a little bit, but we're still passionate. You know, it's not really the sex I miss so much as the affection. Annie described your sex life as passionate. Would you say that was accurate? No, I would not describe it as passionate. No, I would not, no, no. I mean, I, you know, look, after a certain amount of time, things fade, you know? And anybody who tells you differently is lying, so. If you really think that, then why don't you say something? Well, what should I say? Well, I don't know. I mean, I, I never liked the guy, so I would say something like, I think you're a selfish, ignorant misogynist. I know you're having an affair, and I want a divorce. 
Well, who said anything about a divorce? You said that he came home the other night smelling of some other woman's pussy. Perfume. I said perfume. Pussy, whatever. Look, I know when a guy is having an affair, and that's what the little shit is doing. Look, you got a couple of options. You could divorce the prick. You could, you know, stay and live with it, but that's pathetic. Um, or you could, um, you know, have an affair yourself. Do you think that, that, that Harry has ever had an affair? I think that's what that log cabin shit was about. Yeah, he wants a place to take them. Well, why do you stay with him then? Or what? <sighs> what, get another divorce? No way, God, too much work. How can you stay with him knowing that he's had an affair? I don't know, because I did the same thing. You did? Oh my God, what, what you did? <gasps> Oh, you're a gynecologist. Oh, my God. What, isn't that illegal or something? That's... Are you kidding me? It's heaven. I mean, think about it. If there's one thing that that guy knows about, what does he do? What does he do? Well, Annie's problem is uh, she's an idealist. She actually believes all that shit about, you know, true love and living happily ever after. She really believes there are good guys out there. She just has to remember that, you know, Men are like a disease, and unfortunately, most of us have already been infected, and uh, as far as I can tell, there's no cure. So, are you from New York originally? Yeah, yeah, Queens. Well, that's not really New York, is it? No, no, that's really New York. I mean, in fact, in, uh, in my book, that's, you know, the real New York. Why, where are you from? The Upper East Side, born and raised. I mean, the Upper East Side, though, that's not really, you know, New York. I mean, what, what does your dad do for a living? He's like a Wall Street guy or something? He's a lawyer. So, I mean, what does he have to do with making this, you know, a great city? You know, we, on the other hand, the bridge and tunnel crowd, the outer borough folk, you know, we're the ones that built this city. We gave our blood and guts to this town. Like, I have, um, one of my grandfathers was a sand hog. You know, helped build the Lincoln and Holland Tunnel, ended up dying of emphysema from all the dust. I got another grandfather who worked construction on like a dozen skyscrapers, including the Empire State Building, and then he falls to his death when I'm a kid. My dad was a cop, got shot twice while on the job. You know, my mom is a nurse up at Harlem Hospital still, saving lives every day. So you see, you know, we really gave something to this city, our blood, our guts, our lives. So we're the ones that made it great. That's a great story, but I can trace my ancestors back to the original Dutch settlers in the 17th century. And in my book, that's as real a New Yorker as you can get. If you grew up in the outer boroughs, you have a greater appreciation of New York than if you grew up in Manhattan. You know, because, like, we grew up sort of seeing the city from a distance and, like, feeling the pull of it and longing for it. So I think, I don't know, maybe if you grew up here, you just kind of take it for granted. Jesus, you weren't kidding. This is a great space. I thought you'd like it. Obviously, it's a raw space. You'd have to build it out. It costs you some money. I don't mean to be rude, but um, what do you do for a living? I um, uh, produce a television show, entertainment this week. What do you do there? It's, uh, you know, we go around to uh, movie premieres and television shows, and then we interview all these asshole celebrities about, like, who they're fucking and how much they're getting overpaid, and then basically try and help them sell their latest, you know, piece of crap product. So you really like this job? You know what it is? When I got out of college, I wanted to be a writer. I thought maybe I'd go into journalism or, you know, maybe even be a novelist. But the only job I could get when I got out of school was answering phones at the show. So here it is, you know, 10 years later, I'm making a pile of dough. And it's hard to imagine walking away, even though I know, you know, it'd be the best thing for me. Sounds like my marriage. So are you writing anything now? No. You know, uh, every time I try and get started, something comes up from work and I just get distracted. Well, maybe one day I'll be in Barnes & Noble and I'll see one of your books on the shelves and uh, I'll pick it up.